Hey everyone, welcome back to the last Prime 5 News episode of the week. We got five big stories we need to dive deep into because, oh boy, has there been a lot of weird things happening this week. We get to revisit the Denuvo stuff because there's actually been some conversation from the actual developers of Denuvo on how it works and the fact that Nintendo has nothing to really do with it, so that's maybe a bit of a positive. We also have some notes on some anti-cheat measures that Nintendo has implemented into Splatoon 3, which is a big deal since we get to play it this weekend. Oh, and Nintendo and Microsoft are actually talking about price hikes and maybe just not doing them because why would you? That and more on today's Prime 5. So let's get into the news. Our first story deals with Nintendo and Microsoft reassuring consumers that no, unlike Sony, who we reported yesterday has increased the price of the PlayStation 5 in the entire world except the United States by 20%, yeah, a little bit of an anti-consumer move. Well, Microsoft and Nintendo have now commented on it, and good news is, no, they will not be matching the price hike from Sony. Let's get into it a little bit here. So... Shintaro Furukawa actually told investors at the last investors meeting that he would not be increasing the price of the Switch despite inflation, but after Sony made its move, it was a little bit fair to wonder if, hey, now that somebody did it, would Nintendo and other companies follow suit? Well, VGC, Video Game Chronicles, reached out to Nintendo UK, which UK has one of the major price hikes for PlayStation 5, and Nintendo told Video Game Chronicle that they have zero plans to increase prices despite Sony's move. More than that, Microsoft isn't going to increase prices either. They released a statement to many media outlets that simply says they want to offer gaming fans great options. And then they go on to list the current MSRP. Notably, Nintendo did say that retailers themselves may screw around with the price, making it lower or higher, but that Nintendo themselves has not changed the MSRP, nor have they changed how much they are charging retailers for the units, nor have they ever done that with Nintendo Switch. This is actually important to note because in some territories, we have seen some retailers drop the price for Switch a little while ago, but it wasn't per Nintendo's guidance. So we now have confirmation that none of those retailer price drops or price hikes had anything to do with Nintendo. They never changed the price behind the scenes. Moving on, another controversial story this week was that Denuvo is coming to Nintendo Switch. Well, now some representatives from Denuvo have spoke about this at Gamescom, so let's dive a little bit into it. And here's what they said. Since the announcement, there have been some concerns raised about Nintendo's possible involvement in Denuvo because Denuvo uses DRM and a whole bunch of stuff that people just don't like. According to Kotaku, a Denuvo spokesperson has clarified that Nintendo is not involved in this new Switch DRM initiative. The solution is apparently a response to demand from Denuvo's existing publishing partners. And it's also stated how performance won't be impacted. And here's a direct quote from the representative. Because of NDAs, we are not allowed to disclose company names. But we can say this solution comes from strong demand from publishing partners. Software publishers and Denuvo take great care to deliver the best experience. The protection is designed to not affect the gamer's experience. And it does not have any in-game performance impact. It is the same for this new solution when protection is only active in non-performance critical code parts. Denova also mentioned how the tech for Switch would not require online checks and was a solution designed to be fully offline. Also, what's interesting is Luigi Blood, an actual game developer, had this to add about Denuvo. It may not be obvious, but this anti-emulation system has to be approved and within Nintendo's requirements, or else it's not going to pass the lot check. It also cannot be a DRM measure. Nintendo is the only one with DRM control on their systems. It's only Denovo in name. And then he goes on to say, Nintendo is clearly not involved in this, and if Nintendo was to develop anti-piracy slash anti-emulator measures, you may as well include these things into a module on their software development kit, not a separate third-party thing. So the major takeaway is that Denuvo is not using DRM because it isn't allowed to. It, it kind of sounds like maybe it was much to do about nothing because it's just Denuvo in name. It's practicality use cases. 
might be slim to none. Now our next story is really, really quick. We just got some Famitsu game sale updates and I just wanna note, I'm not gonna go over all the numbers here, I'll show them on screen, but what you're seeing here is that Nintendo owns the entire top 30 sales charts. So games on Switch own the entire top 30 in Japan for last week. Nintendo has owned this before. In fact, they've owned the entire top 50 at one point. It has been a while as PlayStation has gotten some of their games onto the charts, but now Switch is back to dominating all over again. And it's like we're just back to 2020 yet again. Now I do have two stories I wanna to end today with about Splatoon 3. The first one is about the Splatoon 3 Switch OLED edition. It went live a little bit after midnight central time last night and a lot of online retailers are now sold out. But notably, you could still find it in many retail stores locally. So if you are interested in the Splatoon 3 OLED edition, I just wanna remind you, hey, maybe after work today or whatever you're doing, if your workouts or whatever's happening, some light gaming, Maybe head on over to your local Walmarts or Best Buys, GameStops, etc., and see if you can pick one up if you happen to be interested. I know I'm still kind of vaguely interested in picking one up for you guys just so I can give it away next month, but we'll have to wait and see on that. And our last story, again, has to do with Splatoon 3, but it's because we're dealing with an anti-cheat system Nintendo has implemented that we already know exists because people are already trying to cheat in Splatoon 3 before it even comes out. What the hell are we talking? How are people cheating in Splatoon 3 before we can even play the damn thing? Well, for starters, the demo is technically live. You just can't do any online matches. You can create your character and run around the, the town, and that's cool. It just sort of seems like it's intentionally live so people can preset up their characters before the big test tomorrow. But here's the thing. People said, that's not good enough. We want to modify our game to do more, and that is how this was discovered. So... All this information comes from Oatmeal Dome on Twitter, and he said, players were modifying the demo files and reloading them on their Switch to enter the testing range before Saturday. This constitutes modifying the game. And most of these accounts have had their accounts and console banned. Oatmeal Do Dome has confirmed this, but won't detail how the system works since the security measures only work due to lacking information publicly. Basically, at least at launch, it's going to be very hard for cheaters to modify their game to gain an advantage, something that was a big issue in Splatoon 2. And I know some people might not think it's a big deal that these modders are accessing the entirety of the range, which is the practice area before tomorrow, but it is a big deal in that it's a modification of the game files. Basically, they take the files, they port them over to PC, they modify them, put them back on their Switch, and this is exactly how cheating worked in Splatoon 2. There were a lot of cheaters in the upper ranks of Splatoon 2. Nintendo tried to catch them here and there and ban them, but they didn't have a really full anti-cheat. This just seems like a really stupid move for anyone to do. I've never understood why people modify and cheat. I get that people want to gain competitive advantages in these games, but also get good. Like, can we just get good? How about you actually get good at Splatoon and be good at it based on your own merits rather than cheating using aim bots and aim assist and, and morphine and like the, oh, there's a lot of crazy things that happen in multiplayer games. Just get good. How hard is it to get good? Anyways, folks, I am Nathaniel RoboJams from Nintendo Prime. This is our last Prime 5 episode of the week. We've got some giveaways going on down in the description, so go ahead and check that out. Pin comment as well. You guys are amazing as we wrap up our August. we got just what, a, a couple days left, so woo! we'll see you guys, well, I don't know, sometime this weekend.